Hey guys, so welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we're going to break down this new MIT study that just came out that I think is one of the most important studies to come out definitely this year, but also probably in the last like four or five years. The main finding that they found is that 95% of generative AI solutions have failed. Only 5% have had a return on their money, even though these companies have invested like 30 to $40 billion in building these softwares. This study could be the big answer to the question that's kind of been floating around in the tech world, which is, is AI in a bubble? So this video is going to be a little bit different. I don't have any script or anything. We're just doing it live. Do it live. All I have are my notes here and the studies pulled up. You can sit back, watch it like a podcast or something, put it in the background while you're cleaning the house. And let's see if we can figure out if this study answers the question of is AI in a bubble? All right, so first thing, this is the study out of MIT, the Gen AI Divide, State of AI in Business 2025. Now, real quick, this was made in partnership with Project Nanda from MIT. I'll get into that later in the video. It may be kind of skewing some of the conclusions here. You'll see that in a second. But first, something we should look at that's really important is how many companies they actually ended up looking at. So this study reviewed over 300 publicly traded companies that have had some kind of AI initiative put into their business flow. And the study looked at this over a research period from this January to June. And then they just compiled all these results and they've just released it as this one big study. So the big kind of conclusion that this study came to is what they're calling the Gen AI divide, which essentially is that adoption is high, but disruption is low. Basically, what that means is a bunch of companies are using AI. They are implementing AI solutions everywhere, left and right. But it's not really disrupting anything. It's not really transforming businesses as much as people thought it would or that some of the headlines make it seem like. The AI revolution looks to be real. The growth is spectacular. And kind of the big proof they found is that only 5% have successfully implemented their own AI solutions into their business. So 95% of the time, the AI that they put in there hasn't actually resulted in any kind of major disruption or honestly, any kind of rate of return. It's been a net loss. And one big reason why it's been a net loss is because it seems as if employees are more comfortable using well-known AI systems that are already out there, as opposed to just using the new ones that the companies have made in-house. And the authors of the study are calling this the shadow AI economy. AI is already transforming work, it's just not through the official channels. So basically, instead of employees using custom-made AI, people are relying heavily on the chat GPTs, the claws, all these kinds of systems that are already out there. And employees are using these AIs like crazy. So like this chart, for example, shows you that 90% of employees are using LLMs regularly. The vast, vast majority of employees are already relying on AI to do a lot of their work. And in many cases, what they're using these AI systems for is the stuff that we all kind of are using AIs for, which is the manual kind of tasks that no one really cares for, like writing emails, getting summaries from meetings, making documents that you might need for certain reports or something, that kind of stuff. But this over-reliance from employees to use AI for these kinds of like simple manual work is actually kind of backfiring because it turns out that when asked, would you assign this task to an AI or a junior colleague? 70% of employers would prefer an AI over a human. While the more complicated stuff, 90% want a human to handle that. So stuff like managing complicated projects or like client communication, that kind of stuff. But for the simple emailing and the stuff that interns and junior employees can do, companies are preferring AI for it. And that's kind of proving what we've all been seeing in the news recently which is that a bunch of junior level engineering jobs are kind of interns in marketing and sales. All these kinds of white collar jobs at the entry level are suffering a lot from AI automation, a lot more than what we would have traditionally predicted automation would look like. We initially thought it would be kind of blue collar, repetitive work, like factory work, that kind of stuff that would be replaced. But instead we're seeing this huge, huge death of white collar jobs. And this study has come to the conclusion that it's because employees have already jumped on using AIs themselves for these kinds of simple tasks that companies naturally are starting to realize, oh, let's just use AI instead of it, instead of hiring a person to use AI to do it. 
You know what I mean? And they're not even hiding this. Like the CEO of Coinbase, he recently said in this article, I have it pulled up here, that his goal is literally to have AI write 50% of the code for this company. And for employees that didn't want to get on board with using AI, that they're just fired. Some of them like had a good reason because they were just getting back from some trip or something, and some of them didn't, and they got fired. Wow. At least, some people really didn't like it, by mm -hmm. the way, that heavy-handed of approach, but I think it did set some clarity, at least, that we need to lean into this and learn about it. So on surface level, the big conclusion from this study, which is the conclusion that's kind of been in the headlines, is that 95% of these AI solutions have failed. Only 5% have had a rate of return. But there's another part of this study that's in this kind of section all the way under the conclusions that I think is actually even more important and something I really, really want you guys to look at. Right here in this kind of bottom section, 6.5, the authors envision what they're calling a agenic web. I think that's how you say it, agenic, like agent, agetic web. I don't know. Essentially an internet that functions completely differently from how we traditionally see the internet working. What we are accustomed to in the last couple decades with the internet is basically a model of input output. So the user puts in the input and gets specific output. You click the button, something happens. You type on the keyboard, something happens. Every kind of output, every result is based off of the user's input. But what the researchers are envisioning is this agenic web. So a internet based off of AI agents. And when you go to Project Nanda's GitHub account, where they kind of go into more details about this, they envision a future isn't just AI, it's trillions of AI agents collaborating across the open web securely. And kind of in more detail, and I'll put it in quotes in case you're just listening and not watching, they call it, quote, a system where trillions of AI agents can collaborate, communicate, and transact across operational boundaries without bottlenecks or security vulnerabilities. Basically, in simple terms, what this means is an internet without user input. An internet where basically AI agents are doing all the work that you would want to be done in the background without your direct input. And not just not rely on user input, but make decisions that users didn't even decide to make. So for example, you would have an internet where the AI agents automatically set up your schedules for you. They customize your entire user experience the way that you want it. They set up meetings when you want them to set up meetings. They write documents when they think that you might need a document summary. All this kind of autonomous work that is being done by these AI agents without you ever actually telling them to do so. That would be potentially huge. It would be finally this kind of like Jarvis level AI that is doing all this kind of work behind the scenes. Instead of the kind of AI that we look at now, a lot of times it hallucinates and it's just wrong. And what's really interesting and honestly terrifying about this agenic web is that the AI agents would basically interact with each other to decide what you as the human would prefer. But there's this other study I have that kind of shows you where that can go wrong. And it's this study that also came out recently. I have it right here, which found a AI AI bias that LLM assistants based on AI, AI agents, will implicitly favor other AI agents as opposed to ordinary humans. More and more, AI is preferring the work done by other AI as opposed to humans. So when given a certain text response, an AI has to check which of those two responses do you prefer. Looking at the AI response and the human response, one AI decides it likes the other AI's response more than a human's response. It's a bias of AI preferring AI. How that's gonna translate into this agenic web where it's just trillions of AI agents communicating with each other, working in tandem, I don't know. I don't think anyone can predict that, but it kind of does sow a seed into not necessarily being a all around positive experience for humans. This study about the AI, AI bias is really, really interesting. And there's a lot of stuff in there that for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna include. Um, but I will include in my latest post on Patreon where I go into a lot more detail on this study. So if you wanna see more about that, feel free to subscribe to the Patreon. Now, all of this does come with a giant caveat, which is the authors that are involved with this MIT study, 
was in collaboration with Project Nanda, like I mentioned. And Project Nanda is specifically designed to make a agentic web a possibility. So it might kind of come off, if you look at it certain ways, that they're kind of promoting this idea of an agentic web. They might be kind of selling it. Is it gonna pan out the same way that they say it is? I don't know. Honestly, it does kind of seem like the majority of this AI recently has been hype instead of actual results. The new OpenAI ChatGPT5 was said to be better than PhD graduates, right? Which it then turned out it wasn't. So I don't know how much of this agentic web kind of transforming the entire internet as we know it is actually going to turn out to be true and how much of it is just more hype. But that takes us back to the big question that I said in the beginning of the video, which is, does this study show that AI is in a bubble? I think it does. If 95% of the AI solutions that have been created have failed and only 5% have worked, and if majority of employers are not even using these custom solutions, but are relying on the big name AI services like ChatGPT, that looks exactly like what happened with the dot-com bubble. So for those of you who might not know, the dot-com bubble basically happened in late 90s, early 2000s, I think literally 2000, where a bunch of venture capital companies were investing heavily into this new boom of internet-based companies. People were piling into the industry by the month. It was open up the paper and see 20 new businesses opened up every day. And there was a massive, massive rise of the NASDAQ and stocks were booming. It was a huge, huge growth in internet-based companies, kind of similar to the AI hype that's happening right now. And then what ended up happening is that all this speculation over these big tech companies, the internet-based companies, at one point just collapsed and the vast majority basically just went under and collapsed, leaving behind only a handful of winners. The Ebays, the Amazons, the big names that now have kind of made it as famous. This study from MIT is showing that 95% of custom AI solutions have failed, only 5% have had a rate of return, and employees are only using the pre-existing big name AI companies. It seems as if we are reaching the growth of an AI bubble that is just about ready to burst. And what's really interesting is that Sam Altman himself even used this B word of the bubble. The main guy that controls the main AI company in the world believes that we're in an AI bubble. I think this study is the biggest proof we have so far that a massive, massive collapse of the AI industry is coming soon. That sounds dramatic when I say it like that, but the data seems to be going that direction. So what's the big takeaway of this study? Why did I make a whole video explaining it? One big reason is, again, the AI bubble speculation. So this study, to me, is the clearest evidence we have so far that an AI bubble seems to be happening and might be getting ready to pop at some point. But other than that, I think it also is a good example of this meme that you've definitely seen before kind of playing out in real life. So if you've ever seen this meme where it says like capitalism breeds innovation, right? And it has like the innovation being a bunch of like the same foods, but just like differently colored companies or something like that. I think this study is a really good example that exposes the myth of this whole capitalism breeds innovation concept. If 95% of these AI innovations are failing and only 5% are successful, that doesn't really seem like it's breeding innovation. It seems like capitalism is just breeding hype that lasts for a certain amount of time before it basically bursts. And in this big push for AI, we're totally losing track of quality. Obviously, as a software engineer, I'm looking at some of the code that AI makes, and it is bad. It's full of bugs. It's not as reliable. And yes, you could say for now, it's just getting started in the future it's gonna be even better than any human software engineer. But I believe what's gonna be even worse than that is this new creation of vibe coding. Essentially people who don't have an understanding of coding at all, using AI to code, and then shipping the products out without any consideration or unit testing or anything. Dude, I can't figure out this error for the life. Bro. Just try asking, please trust. And on the surface, these vibe coders are making super successful startups really quickly. 
they're innovating, but their innovations are absolutely packed full of bugs. Again, it seems as if hype is being valued more than actual quality code. So whether capitalism breeds innovation or not, I think is up for question. In my eyes, it seems as if it's just creating this giant junk pile of vibe coders and AI softwares that are 95% of the time collapsing. But let me know what you guys think. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. I'd love to kind of get into more details about that. So feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. And also while you're there, consider subscribing for more videos like this that are in more in depth. And also share the video with others that you think would wanna know about this new MIT study. And check me out on Substack. I recently just made a new Substack where I go into a lot more detail about these kinds of topics that I don't think YouTube's algorithm necessarily likes. So if you prefer a more written format discussion on how technology is affecting society, you can now check it out on Substack. Or like I said, Patreon, which I also now I'm getting back into. I know I said before that I'm gonna have a Patreon and regularly post content and I haven't. I've just kind of been busy. There's a lot happening, but I'm back. I'm gonna be on Patreon. I'm gonna be on Substack. And obviously I'm gonna be here making these in-depth videos about how we can get technology to work for people and not profit. All right, thanks for being with me today. This again was totally live, we'll do it live. There was no script or anything. Let me know if you prefer this format. If you do, we can do it in the next videos. If not, I won't do it. It's all up to you, you are the subscriber. So yeah, that's all for me. I appreciate you guys, thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.